DMT. It was DMT. The DMT, 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 DMT. As many of you know, of all the classic psychedelics, in many respects, DMT, or dimethyltryptamine, is the most mysterious. When it is consumed, experiencers report being blasted off and into an entirely new dimension of being or plane of existence, where you interact with autonomous, intelligent, and wise beings. Those who have experienced this often claim that they return to our world with a new sense of having learned important lessons that are either too hard to put into words or are so simplistic that it seems like common sense. For example, a common refrain is that love is the answer to the problem. Now, we have no idea what is happening in a person's brain when they are on DMT. Is this experience completely physiological? For example, has the DMT induced essentially a uh, dreamlike state where you are still conscious? Or is it more mystical than that? Either way, the simplistic wisdom gained from the spirit molecule, as it is often called, has reportedly helped countless people beat addictions, depression, anxiety, and more. Many people liken it to essentially resetting your brain. But despite so much anecdotal evidence, an entire subculture is verging on the edge of religions dedicated to this substance. Surprisingly little hard science has been done on the drug, which is why I am so excited by this new story today. MindMed announces initiation of phase one clinical trial of intravenous DMT. With this announcement, MindMed, ticker symbol MNMD, has joined the small club of scientific institutions dedicating themselves to unraveling the mysteries of Dimitri. In this episode, we will discuss three things. First, what is DMT? Second, we will explore the MindMed clinical trial. And third, we will look at the current science on the drug. I'm James from The Psychedelic Investor, and if you enjoy this episode, smash that like button, subscribe, and hit the notifications bell to ensure that you never miss an important update like this. Most importantly, leave me a comment down below telling me what you think about DMT. Without further ado, let's break on through to the episode. Before we jump into MindMed's new clinical trial, let's spend a couple of minutes discussing what DMT is. Dimethyltryptamine is a naturally occurring molecule that can be found throughout nature, including in plants, animals, and even the human brain. So, some scientists suspect that DMT is released in our system while we are dreaming, and when we are born, or perhaps while we are dying. Though, for complete transparency, we're not exactly sure the purpose of having DMT in our brain. What is the evolutionary purpose of having this drug in our brain? Now, throughout history, DMT has been used in different religious ceremonies due to it being perceived, uh, due to its perceived connection rather to higher beings. Now, the most famous example of this is the ayahuasca drink that is consumed by many native South American tribes as part of their ceremonies for centuries. DMT can be consumed in many different fashions, with the most popular being smoking it, drinking it in a brew like ayahuasca, or taking it intravenously. While consuming it in a beverage may cause a multi-hour long experience, what is interesting about smoking DMT is how short the effects last. Often, the experience will last no longer than 20 to 45 minutes, though it may feel a little bit longer than that to the person who's consuming the drug. Likewise, when taken intravenously, the experience can be quickly ended by the person administering the compound. One of the most fascinating aspects of DMT, DMT excuse me, is how uniform people's experiences on the drug are. Though not always the case, Usually people report traveling through a tunnel at hyperspeed, and if they take enough of the substance, they will undergo a death-like experience before breaking through to the other side where they will enter another universe with totally different physics than ours, making describing the place nigh impossible. There, they interact with wise beings who teach them lessons. Sometimes these beings are described as gods or aliens, machine elves, or self-dribbling basketballs. These beings are a complete mystery. 
Are they a figment of our imagination? Just a natural outcome of a chemical reaction happening in our brains. After all, we know from our dreams that our brains are perfectly capable of conjuring up apparently autonomous beings that we have no control over. Or is something more mysterious happening? Now, while the scientific part of myself obviously leans towards the first conclusion, and realistically that's probably what's happening, the adventurer within me yearns for the second. Either way, after returning to our plane, people often report that they see the world as it truly is for the very first time, though they can't fully explain what they mean by this. On top of this, many claim to have been given the power to change themselves, including scores of people who claim that it has helped them defeat their mental health issues, be it addiction, depression, anxiety, or some other issue. But despite these anecdotal success stories existing in the thousands, very little clinical research has been done into the substance due to the illegality of the compound, making claiming any medical benefits with any level of certainty extremely hard to do. This is why I am so excited about this new clinical trial hosted by MindMed. I am a huge supporter of any and all research into this mysterious molecule, mostly because I just want to figure out what the hell is going on here. One of the main benefits of using DMT in therapy, as opposed to say LSD or magic mushrooms, is the short duration of the experience. Whereas LSD and psilocybin experiences can last anywhere between 6 and 8 hours or more, the entire DMT experience can be kept to under an hour. If DMT therapy is equally as effective as LSD or psilocybin therapy, this shorter duration would make it more practical than other classical substances. One of the main drawbacks of LSD-assisted therapy, for example, is the fact that it can take half a day, meaning a patient would have to pay the therapist or the clinic a huge amount of money, making it impractical for all but the rich. MindMed's trial is taking place in Switzerland under the leadership of Dr. Lee Ecci, and it has received all the necessary regulatory approvals. It is now enrolling the 30 healthy participants for the randomized five-period crossover double-blind placebo-controlled trial. This is a phase one clinical trial, meaning that the main objective of the study is just to test DMT's safety. On top of this, MindMed wants to test the varying safety and effects of four different dose levels of DMT administered intravenously as compared to a placebo. They are doing it intravenously because they believe that it will allow them for greater control of the experience and it will give them the power to shut it down relatively quickly on the off chance that things go sideways. According to the trial, Currently, no study has validly determined the elimination half-life of DMT and other pharmacokinetic parameters. Therefore, the key aim is to test the dose response of DMT, as well as the difference between the loading dose bolus and no bolus perfusion conditions regarding pharmacokinetic subjective and autonomic effects, including physiological and physical tolerability. Wow, that was quite the sentence. So in other words, in plain English, that means that they want to see how people react to different dose levels of DMT when administered in an IV, including how responses differ when you start with a large dose and then give a constant amount over the next 90 minutes versus just giving the constant amount from the very beginning. They will be measuring both subjective variables, such as your mood and what you describe to have experienced, and also measurable variables like heart rate, blood pressure, blood plasma levels, and any adverse effects or adverse events that will happen during the trial. If this trial is successful, then the company will move into phase two trials to begin testing its efficacy in treating a specific malady, though the company has yet to announce which malady they will attempt to treat. In this study, five different treatments will be administered, and the experience for each of them will last 90 minutes. The first is simply a placebo to compare data against. The second is a quote-unquote low dose, where 0.6 milligrams of DMT per minute will be administered, for a total of 54 milligrams being administered over the 90 minutes. The third tier has the same amount of DMT being delivered per minute, but it also includes a 15 milligram dose being delivered at the beginning of the therapy to kickstart the experience, bringing the total amount of DMT being administered to 69 milligrams. Nice. 
The fourth dose level is called a high dose, with one milligram per minute being delivered, totaling 90 milligrams. And finally, the fifth has the same dosing per minute as the fourth, but with 25 milligrams being delivered to start the session. Hopefully, this study will come back saying that DMT was perfectly tolerated in all the 30 patients at all dose levels, and we can begin to quantify what the heck is going on when we take DMT. It is important to note that MindMed is not the only company in the world working with DMT. For example, one company called Small Pharma has already commenced their own phase one trial, while Atai Life Sciences and Entheon each hope to start theirs soon. But other than these companies, very little clinical research is being done on DMT at all. And that means we have to rely on cross-sectional research that often doesn't have the same controls or placebos that we would expect in a clinical research study. And while these often do find phenomenal results, we must be wary of the self-selection and confirmation biases inflating the positive effects of this drug. One such study looked at the effects of ayahuasca in improving people's lives who have psychiatric disorders, so right off the bat, very broad. Nevertheless, it is it found that six months after taking the brew, 80% of the individuals saw significant improvements to their quality of life, and this same study showed that long-term users of ayahuasca had lower depression levels and higher qualities of life than those who just used the drug once. So like I said, phenomenal results and enough to justify clinical trials. But due to the inherent difficulty of weeding out biases in a study like this, not enough to state with certainty that DMT actually works to treat mental health issues. Another study done by MAPS showed significant reductions in addiction levels, particularly when it came to cocaine and, and alcohol. But again, this had a small sample size of only 11 people, and this did not have clinical trial level controls. So definitely positive, but not definitive. There are quite a few more studies like this that essentially just look at people who were either already planning on taking ayahuasca or who had already taken it, and then after the fact gave their own subjective opinions on how much they improved. And while that is definitely useful to a degree, at least useful enough to justify real clinical trials, it's not good enough to say with any level of certainty that DMT is an, an effective healing agent. Likewise, there have been animal trials that purport to show potential benefits, but until we can see them translated into human trials, we can't extrapolate too much from them. One outcome that we can state with very high levels of confidence is that people don't seem to be capable to overdose on DMT, so at least it's safe in that manner, and also the substance does not appear to be addictive. Though we can't say with certainty what side effects long-term use may have, so basically, TLDR, it is very exciting that MindMed is starting this DMT phase 1 clinical trial. Hopefully we can learn a lot about this molecule and begin to understand what happens when a person consumes the drug. And if we are lucky, and much of this anecdotal evidence that is re reported turns out to be true, we may have a new powerful mental health drug on our hands. I'm James from The Psychedelic Investor, and if you enjoyed this episode, like and sub. And if you made it all the way to the end here, comment Dimitri down below so I can see how many of you watched the full episode. Until next time. <laughs>